Hey going guys, welcome back. Another episode of this build of our little Hyundai XL race car. Getting it ready for the track and one thing we do need to do is get a wheel alignment on it. So we're going to make ourselves a bit of a wheel alignment kit for this car. Okay, so when it came to actually thinking about making a string line kit for this track car, uh, I made many trips to the hardware store late at night trying to figure out how exactly we're going to make it work. And I think I've come up with a pretty inexpensive way um, to make it work. Now, when I say inexpensive, it is will cost you a bit to set up. But in the long run, when you're looking at the cost of going to a wheel alignment center to get it all set up, if you don't have some sort of sponsorship, um, it'll save you money considering it might be $60 to $80, sometimes $100 to get a wheel alignment and set up for the car when you can actually do it at home and save yourself some cash. Then if you don't have a trailer, you might have to hire a trailer to get your car there. There might be another 50, 50 bucks. So it adds up in the long run, whereas if you can make this at home, you can actually save yourself money in the long run. We're making a camber gauge as well today to get the camber on the tires um, and then making the string line kit. Um, <clears throat> I did want to get a, a measurement for the ride height and getting underneath the car with a tape measure didn't seem like something I really wanted to do. So I just got myself a piece, a uh, cheap piece of wood from uh, Bunnings, the hardware store, um, cut it to length, and then I can just put this under the car and measure it um, to length. So I've got, I don't know if you can see, it's cut to a certain length and I've got another line there for another measurement for ride height in the front. And then we can, um, we can add more lines to it if we want to drop it lower or anything like that. I don't think I'll need to go higher than this height here though. So with all this gear here, Let's make ourselves a string line kit and a camber gauge to set us up for getting the car on track. All right, for starters, you'll need, um, we've got some 30 by 30 um, aluminium. Uh, we've got two pieces of those, one's, one's for the front, one's for the back of the car. We've got a number of lengths of 25 by 25 aluminium, and then two lengths of, I think it's 20, yeah, 25 mil round aluminium tube. And then we'll get this all, connected together. We also have a bunch of ratchet straps, um, some bolts, um, a scribe, some pins, um, some connectors in here that are all gonna go towards getting this car um, set up with a string line, um, ready for the track. All right, so camber on these cars, we can run up to uh, negative four degree or four degrees negative camber. Um, we can use our phones to come up with a bit of a gauge on where the camber sits, or we can make up a quick camber gauge for ourselves. All we'll need is some 25 by 25 mil aluminium, a T-piece connector, which are about $2. Um, we're gonna have just some, uh, some brackets here to hold the camber gauge on, and we've got a Klein Tools camber gauge, which is mag magnetic if you do use um, some like steel it will stick to it obviously it won't stick to aluminium um, but this is really accurate and will really get us an idea of where we're sitting at for our camber so what we're going to do is take some measurements come up with the gauge cut it put it all together and uh, get it all sorted ready for taking measurements for our camber all right after a bit of cutting drilling and uh getting it all organized, we now have a camera gauge. So essentially just three pieces of aluminium with a T-piece, two right angle brackets screwed into the aluminium, digital camber gauge. We've got some rivet nuts on the underside with some lock nuts on each bolt. And we just need to make sure that the bolts are the same length, but essentially straight onto your rim. And that can give your get your camber. Obviously, you need to be on the other side to see it, but that'll give you your camber in degrees. Easy. Much cheaper than going out and buying a couple hundred dollar camber gauge. This one here has probably cost me less than 50 bucks, I'd say. So make one for yourself and away you go. So we'll check the length of these bolts and we'll get our camber set. All right, so in the rear, I'm aiming for about two degrees negative camber. Take our 
trusty uh, gauge. Now we don't have the rim, but we can measure off the face of the hub or the right face of the drum, which should be fine. Uh, going between uh, 80, 88.1, which is pretty much spot on two degrees negative camber. So if we put the wheel back on, in theory, it should stay there. <laughs> we'll find out. Essentially for our front bars, we've got um, a 30 by 30 um, by 1.5 mil, uh, one meter long aluminum tube. Just drilled an eight mil hole, about 30 mil in from the end. And then I had a, a 25 mil, um, you see there, 25 mil by one mil by one meter aluminum tube. I cut those in half and I've put two riv nuts in the end. One that the bolt will go into and one just to take up that extra little bit of space uh, in between um, the wall, both walls of the tubes. To bolt them together, uh, these are like $2 or $2.50 from Bunnings or from the hardware store. And they'll just go through that and through the hole. And then we'll bolt into here and you'll end up with a, eventually with a bar that looks like this. Nice and long. So this is just under two meters long. Um, the width of the car, including the mirrors, is 1.6, so it's more than enough to cover the width of the car and get around the wheels, but we'll put these together. And uh, you could run the bar with just the, the tubes in it on um, some jack stands to get the right height, but I'm gonna make something that hangs off the front of the car just to um, make life a little bit easier, I think. And we'll go from there. So I'll bolt these together and we'll um, get our two bars ready to get measured up for a height for the rest of the contraption. All right, you see there, we've got our two bars all set up, same length just how I imagined it, which is coming together nicely. Now it's time to make up our other um, bracing that comes off the front so we can screw these bars to it. These literally are not heavy at all. They are super light. Um, if I was to use steel, they'd be really, really heavy, but these things are super light. I'm not too worried about what they look like. Um, they're just there for measuring and giving me a wheel alignment. So the reason why I'm trying to make it into pieces is just so I can, um, it's easy to transport. I'm not taking huge bars everywhere. Um, and it literally takes all of about a minute, two minutes to put together and screw all together. So we'll get these other bars up here, get those, um, get these ones sorted and then we'll get to doing our wheel on. So the height of this bar now sits 280 is just at the bottom of this pole. Um, and 280 is where we need to get the string line to be optimal with the center of the hubs. Um, on this car, the center of the, st center of the wheel. So we have to take about 12 and a half mil, being a 25 mil pipe, um, take that into account too. But you could run it like this if you really wanted to. Um, I choose not to, I'm just gonna make up a frame that'll sit on the front of the car and uh, we'll get it bolted on then. That way, whenever we jack the car up, um, the string line's still on the car. We can still get all the same accurate measurements and stuff like that, so. We could probably run it this way. It probably wouldn't make much of a difference, but we'll try and get it right. If not, we'll just leave it like this. It's easier for us to take measurements and uh, get it every, everything set up. So we know after taking a few measurements and taking a few, a few things into uh, 
calculations, our middle poles across the middle will be 218 mil. Our left side upright will be 350 because it has to go over the um, radiator cap, just where the poles landed. And our right hand side will be 325, um, which makes sense because when you take into account the height of the radiator cap and the, and the uh, mouth of it, it's 25 mil, so that works out nicely. Now what we're gonna do to keep them centralized on the uh, car when we're on there, I've got these, these pins and you'll just uh, pull them out. Um, they're spring loaded and they'll just sit in there to keep it centralized. So we'll go and start cutting up some tube now try and get some things organized and then we'll uh, come back and put it all together. All right, there we have it. The front half of this is done. You'll see here, I had to slightly adjust it. I wish I could have run it straight from there back, straight over the radiator cap, but with these connections, if I was to do that, the bar would have actually been too high to sit over the top of that and sit on the cap. So. We just run a bit of an extension out the side and then straight back to the other side. I do have the option of running another bar here if I need the extra support, but it should be uh, should be fine. We've just got a bit of slack we have to take up there, which we might just put a bit of foam in behind it. The other one's nice and firm, but that is level. We've got our pins in there, ready to go. And then we'll start working on the back half. Beautiful thing is with this whole thing, this this main bar here removes off the front half so if i just want to use this whole bar by itself without using the attachment to the car i can and then to transport these bars on the side these round bars pull out as well so we'll do the same thing to the back start getting that set up and then we'll uh, start running a string line and just like that we have our rear setup done so it's all held in place inside. I've got put two rivet nuts and two of those bolts in there as well. It's nice and sturdy. It's uh, it's actually I'm very impressed with the way it's come out. I'm pretty proud of myself to be honest. Um, I envisioned I envisioned this being a certain way, and it's come out exactly how I wanted. So now it's time to run a string line between each end. So if you look down here. You can see down the other end is the other end of our pole. It is even, just down there. But we'll um, run a string line and see how we go. We'll just mark off. We may even have to trim a little bit off these ends if it's too sticking out too much. We'll just wait and see. So before we even run our string line, we need to access the interior of our car so we can level out the steering wheel. Now I do have just this bit of level here, so I'll just put it up on top. Uh, that's about level right there. So I know there's different apparatus or different tools you can use to keep your steering wheel in a uh, straight line. Um, I'm going to use just a simple tool, just a it's just a tie down off a uh, off a motorbike. Loop that around there. There's a loop here that goes through that. It'll sit right there, through there like so. Now I can trim some of the excess off this because it is way too long, but you can buy these at Anaconda um, in Australia for about, I think they're like six or seven dollars. So, And we can make sure our steering wheel remains level. Which is right there. We put two straps on it and then uh, level it out and it'll be good to go. And then we can start doing our wheel alignment. There we go. 
nice and sturdy, that's not going anywhere, and it's level, straight. Now we can get on to running our string lines and uh, doing a wheel alignment. Front wheel alignment done, took a bit of time because it was way out. The left hand or the passenger side was about 17 mil toe in, something ridiculous like that. It's now right, we've got it at the setting we want it. The front was about, uh, I think it was about five to six mil toe in. Um, remembering that a few videos before we had to change the tie rods, um, I had to go up and fix the tie rod because it was starting to come loose. So lock tighted that, got it nice and tight in there and uh, it should be good now, but we've got it the right setting, we just got to do the rear toe now, um, we get that set up, but this, uh, this setup I've got going is so easy. Because we've got it actually attached to the car, every time we want to actually um, use it or jack the car up, the string line just rises up with the car so we can actually, instead of just moving things around all the time. We literally just jacks up with the car, comes back down, still the right spot. Nothing changes. And uh, yeah, it's it's turned out an absolute bloody treat. I'm so excited, I've been so happy with the way it's turned out. So uh, we'll get that going. And uh, camber's good, toe's good, and the front. Um, yeah, it's much, much, uh, excitement to go with this because it just makes life so much easier. That's me done for this episode. Um, if you want any information about how to set this up, um, shoot me a message. Uh, make sure you like, like and subscribe uh, to this channel. We'll be posting a bit more. We're very close to now getting this car on track now that we've got some sort of wheel alignment in the car. Um, I'm really happy with the alignment, happy with the bars that I've made up. Um, we've got a few minor things that we need to do. We need to put a catch can and stuff in the car before we take it out. But right now I need to clean up all that mess and all the mess out of my shed with my drill press and all the shavings and everything else going on out there. And uh, yeah, look at what we're going to be doing next to this car because we are very, very close to making it out on track. I'll see you next time. I'm in the big leagues, don't it don't miss me, ballin' like Houston.